Hi there, I'm James Dapache, and this is Coffee and a Case Note. Team, today we're talking about two 60, 40 shareholders in a company, right? This company owns a block of land. What happens is one shareholder, who we'll call F, and one shareholder, who we'll call A, enter into an arrangement where essentially what they agree to do is uh, to take this block of land that the company owes and they say we're each going to shave off a little bit of that block for ourselves. The company will develop most of it but because we're applying our efforts and you know, various, various things to go ahead with the company's development, we're going to take a block for ourselves. All right, time passes and A shaves off, sub, subdivides uh, part of the block and causes that block to be transferred to A's ownership and there is a contract for sale which records the price of that transfer transfer at $175,000 but A does not pay that amount. So we find ourselves in a position where um, we've got this arrangement, A's got the benefit, A's got A's land, F does not have F's land. So we then flash forward a few years where there's this curious meeting between F, A, a member of a relevant accounting firm, and a private investigator instructed by F. And um, if you're interested, you can head to the judgment to see what this private investigator said. But broadly speaking, the private investigator applied pressure to A on the basis that A had engaged in a sham in causing this land to be transferred to A and not paying the $175,000. It's, it's sort of legally complex. Um, the language is straightforward and um, has a bit of a um, made up tough guy sort of vibe to it that's, uh, that's good fun. But in essence, it is F's representative, this private investigator, uh, displaying displeasure at A, taking the benefit of the transfer of this land while F has nothing. Time passes. And the piece of litigation we're actually dealing with today is F commencing proceedings for specific performance of the arrangement or the agreement. He wants A, F wants A to specifically cause the transfer of this land to himself. Now, at first instance, F fails. And what the judge says is, look, this arrangement does not create a binding obligation on A to transfer this land to F. F, sorry, you lose. F appeals. And as F appeals, um, F continues to seek this specific performance. And what the Court of Appeal find is that indeed there is a binding obligation on A to cause the transfer to F. But an interesting argument that A raises. A says that in causing the private investigator to go ahead to this meeting and say the things that the private investigator said, F <laughs> repudiated the contract. Repudiated, a silly legal word, uh, it means evinces or sort of shows, displays an intention not to be bound by the contract. Put another way, if you, uh, in your acts or in the things you say, show that it looks like you don't intend to be bound by the terms of a contract, you have repudiated it, and it gives a right to the other side to terminate and to do other things. So essentially what A is saying is, well, F, you told this private investigator to demand the 175 grand from, from me. We agreed there would be no payment for the land, so by you causing this investigator to demand the money, essentially you evinced an intention not to be bound you repudiated the contract. It's an interesting point, right? Because on the face of it, there's something to that argument because yeah, they originally agreed they wouldn't pay anything. Uh, F caused someone to you know, demand the money. A ended up paying that 175 grand, but that's sort of a, an issue that's left a bit fuzzy in the judgment. But in any case, um, there's this argument made that in making the demand for the money, F has repudiated. Now, that argument is not accepted. The reason for that is that F at this stage has actually done everything that F needs to do in order to perform the contract because A has got A's land. So there's nothing left 
for F to repudiate. There's nothing left for F to evince an intention not to do because A's already got everything A wants. And so what the court says is that A's purported acceptance of F's repudiation is itself a repudiation. It is itself evincing A's intention not to be bound. And so F, in short, succeeds in proving that A has breached the contract. Now, the lingering question for the court is that F has sought specific performance of the contract. Specific performance is what it sounds like. It is causing the other party to do all the things that they said they would agree to do. Uh, and it is as opposed to relief like damages, which is essentially the payment of money. Hey, you know, I suffered a loss. The loss was worth X dollars, so pay me X dollars. F continues to press for specific performance. Uh, I want this specific sliver of land transferred to me. Now, what the Court of Appeal says is there are real challenges with specific performance. Those challenges are, firstly, um, the relevant uh, documents and conversations that form part of the agreement don't describe the land especially precisely. And so it's unclear what those orders for specific performance would look like in circumstances where we don't precisely know what the land is. Secondly, in relation to specific performance of a subdivision, um, well, there's only so much F can cause A to do without there having to be moves made by, you know, the council and planning authorities, and I think the planning minister in this case as well, if I'm recalling correctly. So um, if A is required to specifically do stuff, there's every chance that even if A did all those things, F wouldn't end up with any land because the subdivision would be in the hands of the council and it would be out of A's hands and indeed F's hands as well. So what the Court of Appeal says is, look, if you win, but we don't know whether it should be specific performance or damages, so this matter has to go back to the primary judge for the judge at first instance to make that decision. A little bit complex today. Hope I brought you some value and look forward to speaking again soon over another coffee and in respect of another case note. Cheers.